today transform this beautiful little bookshelf. And I mean, it's pretty nice as it is. It's pretty uh, light. And I know a lot of people have been doing a lot of white. And to me, that just means it's a canvas ready to be painted or transformed into something uh, uh, that's more centerpiece like. So anyways, today we've got all of our pieces. Um, I'm a little bit more organized than my first movie, I believe, or tutorial. Um, we have, obviously, we have the shelf, uh, we have the case, we have the shelf, and we have, as picked today, we're gonna to be doing an apricot color inside. And we then are going to, I have this stencil right here that I will do on the inside in the dove white. And then um, I'm gonna do a blue or turquoise uh, little dot in the center. And um, so I've already sanded. Half of this is just like plywood or not even plywood. It's um, probably some sort of uh, cardboard almost. Some of it's wood, some of it's not. So you don't want to use um, the electric sander on these types of things because they will probably just uh, be too aggressive. So we're going to start on step one and we're going to see how to transform this thing. And really it's all about I think picking colors and making things just pop as they are. So, here we go. painted and I hear Zaza got stuff in probably the shop or something so I need to go get her and then I'm going to paint the shelf because I decided to keep the front like it's squared in and we'll keep this top um, when I get back from getting the Zahaba and so I gotta see on that a little bit just watch it dry for a minute okay. We got her. She's out. She's in the shop. We are period city. She's in the shop. So, what do you think, Zah? You like the colors? Huh? Is that something that you like? Is it more your color tone now? Yeah. It's super pretty. You just can't walk on it. Alright, so we're gonna. Um, just to begin with because it needs just a little roughing up so the paint would adhere to it and I am going to do at the end I will do a sealer on it um, all of it because I just want to make sure that it really holds and you're going to be placing things on it um, and you don't want it to scratch off because there's usually a finish on all these things and you want to be sure that it is nice and adheres. So wipe it off the dust and here we So we're not going to sit here and watch paint dry and I'm not going to make you sit here and watch paint dry. So we're wrapping up our paintbrush in a little plastic bag. We're going to let this dry 
and we'll see you probably after the second go. Hey, we're back. It's actually the next day because some things just came up in that life. And um, I painted, I've done about two to three coats on this one. Just because the back, um, the back was not taking it as well as just wood wood. Wood wood, anyway. Um, so I would suggest probably doing a primer for these types of things. I thought maybe this one would have one on, but it didn't. So getting one that could be a better binder on it will definitely be beneficial. The nice part is we're doing a stencil over the top of this. So, I mean, some of the little imperfections won't show, but at the same time, um, it's at the back and I will be spraying the whole thing down with a sealer just to make sure that it doesn't scrape, scratch or scrape and will just be a little bit more durable. So anyway, here we go. I'm actually, I've had this stencil for quite a while. And some of these things, the reason I don't tell prices is because these are all things that have been in my house and I'm now just deciding, hey, why not utilize them and give them, um, give them purpose other than sitting on the shelf. And so um, I don't know some of the prices of things because they, they were my husband before we met, I didn't buy them, different things like that. But this one is designer stencils. Um, I think I got it at like probably Michael's or one of the art store or the hardware stores. Usually stencils can wear it then anywhere from $10 to $30. And I mean, it seems a little pricey, but if you can do, use them multiple times, that's not a big, it's really not a big price. And this one I use on my, um, on my townhouse. I didn't have money for replacing the tiles in my kitchen, so I painted them and used the stencils a couple of them. And so this time, I am going to use this and I am going to not use this sideways. I'm going to use it a little bit differently and bring it to the pattern. The pattern isn't going to be super different. It's not crazy different. Just the leaves of the circle are going to be going a little bit in a different direction. And the nice part is, is the backboard here has a line, which you can't see there, but I can see. So I'm gonna get started. And again, just the normal, get your tape. And I'm gonna start with center with this one because it's gonna be cut off. Um, it's gonna be cut off in a certain way. So I want the center to be uh, right and not one corner like the other edges can be cut off instead of this guy be cut off. So you get your tape on there nice and strong and you mark out your center which I have done already and I, the shelf in Moose has three spots for the convenience so I don't have to be uh, I don't, I have a center, but I also have a flexible center. And again, if you want to do this by laying it down and moving and doing it that direction, it's probably a little bit easier because there is, I don't know if you see that might just be going over. Um, it will, gravity helps, of course, so much more. You still want to put tape down because you want it firm and secure if you're laying it down. You're doing it that way because um, you want your stencil to be more taut. Kitty toys. 
that can go on a little further. Again, we're gonna get our stencil brushes like this. They're flat. So, and you also dab. And for the circles, I'm gonna be doing uh, a turquoise color, which I will be just using my little painter's brush just because they're so small. I mean, my stencils would work, but I think I can get more exact. So, and we're gonna be using Divine White for um, the petal parts. So I'm gonna go with the medium size just because they're kind of more fine lines. And you get brush on, or paint on the brush, brush, paint brush, um, blah, blah, blah. And you tap to try to get the paint to not be so thick. Otherwise, you're gonna get blue. Start at one point. And obviously, with this one, if you get white on the circle, that's fine because we're going to be painting over it with the blue. And I think I also kind of want a little bit lighter turquoise. Having some of the white there is good. So we'll lighten it up just a tad or give it a little bit more rustic look maybe. I like it. It's so cute. Awesome. Woo woo woo. So you can see, and we have a little bit. That came up, but we'll get that patched up.
So as you can see, you match up the little dots over the dots already. And this one's a little bit difficult because it goes into this corner here. And so there'll be some folding and some tension that I'll have to do. So that's the not so easy part about this one is there will be some folding over, some kind of moving it and getting it to work with what we're doing. So I'm just gonna get to it. And if you have more questions, obviously, um, ask them in the comments and I will let you know some of these things. Good morning, Inspired Ones. So, today I have my coffee and I'm gonna get this bookshelf done. I've had some things come up and that's life, isn't it? It's been a couple days and I haven't gotten back to it. And it's very dark and rainy outside today, but I'm gonna get this done. Um, yeah, so. A sip of coffee right sometimes get jobs done and actually sometimes the smaller ones are harder than the bigger ones sometimes I think the hardest thing with this one is the angles in the inside it's kind of like my tattoos I've got a few I have got well a combo my back has two tattoos on it that I didn't add on so there's one tattoo on the back one tattoo on my leg and one tattoo on my hand and guess which one hurt the most? The one, the little one on the hand. So it's just because of angles, because of bone, you know, less muscles and meat and um, probably that. But that's kind of just how it goes. Um, I mean, this one's not too difficult. Um, I'm going to change it up a bit because the um, angles is just not very easy doing it upright. So I don't know how much video I'll be able to get of it. Um, this because it's going to be a little bit more hand, hands-on, I guess. Um, less tape just to give it an anchor, but I don't need to hold it up anymore. Stuff like that. So it'll be less, but I highly recommend just slowing down and doing it as you need to do it because you want to do a good job instead of just trying to get it done. So, all right. Cheers. Drink your coffee. Let's get it. Job done. Okay, so the hard part about doing it down now is making sure I don't drip on the paint that I've already done and also um, making sure, yeah, that it just stays intact and all that. But again, I probably won't be videoing most of this just because it's kind of awkward and the camera is actually inside the bookshelf, which is not always conducive but I've learned that with laying it down I don't have to dab I actually can brush a little bit more than having to than having to um, having to dab the whole time which is kind of nice but that's just because I've got lines when you've got lines you can do be a little bit with the circles, you need to dab. Um, but since these are just kind of little ridgy lines, I can do this like this. And give it time 
Uh, definitely give it time for some drying because I've had some spots like over here where the glue kind of got in it. I mean, I'm not going to be super particular because um, I wanted to ha have a little bit of a interesting look. So I'll keep going and we'll see ya after I get this finished. All right, same thing for the corners over here. So, we got just corners left, I'm so excited. Um, I was just thinking as I'm doing this, cause it's again, I chose to turn sideways and to make it all a little different. And I was just thinking, man, why did I decide to do something that makes it a little bit more harder? But, you know, in the end, like nobody's gonna have a bookshelf just like this. So remember, when you're doing these things and they're harder than maybe than they could have been or different things like that because of things you've decided to do, just remember when you're done, remember the vision. Remember the vision you had in your head. Remember the vision of having something that you did. It's not factory made. It is also one of a kind, unique, original, what you envision and that is such a payoff so don't give up on even small projects you thought that were going to be super easy okay so yep so the corners we just need to remember try to not do your overhang so you're going to have to overlap some of these things um and and you'll just have to line them up you know i could I can't do exactly because it's not going to line up, which is kind of a bummer, but as long as I work, oops, I can't do that way, that's right, I have to go kind of sideways because we did it this way. So I'm going to have some overhang, but look at I don't have to have a ton of overhang. So I just want to make sure it's lined up to the direction, so I'll find your dots. I always am like, look for dark the darkest color usually your small things like dots are like the best thing to line up so look at I only have a tiny bit of overhang I don't have to paint all of this I just have to paint where I haven't done yet so that's how you do the corners to make them a little easier okay all right we're back I kind of finished it but we have some touch-ups because um, I didn't wipe it off once and, you know, stuff happens with uh, stencils and stuff like that. So um, we're gonna put it upright and so that we can uh, work on it that way so I can see it from a different angle rather than looking down and all this kind of fun stuff. looking pretty good in the camera but up here in the corner I don't know if you probably can't see it too well but um, there is a bit of a spot or two so you, I'm gonna touch those up and also finish up touching up this little ridge and uh, that we'll put it all together then so Let's do that. That's always a good thing. I mean, I used up all the apricot, so like trying to get some of these touch-ups. Good thing there isn't a lot of touch-ups. I mean, that's always important. I have a little bit left over for touch-up later on. And so we can just all nice and in. My brushes are a little a little damp from washing them off. That's another thing. If you're using, uh, you used acrylic paint for the turquoise because I didn't want to go buy a whole uh, even sample size, which I mean sample size like this at 
uh, different places, Lowe's, Home Depot, some of that. I mean, they're only like three dollars. Same size as a tube of paint, but I'm like, I already had it. So I mean, I'm all about using what you already have, utilizing, um, utilizing what you, what you can do. I mean, uh, utilizing product that is here. And I mean, actually, what I've realized is being creative is not about having all access to everything at your disposal. It's actually uh, creativity is looking what you have and um, making something out of what you have. And so that's for you inwardly, like finding the beauty, finding the little pieces that you can put together and create and be the individual you. But that's the same where it comes out is what you bring out is going to be your um, display. You don't have to have it every single piece or have money to pull and go buy whatever you need to buy all the time is utilize what you have at your disposal. And I'm not saying that being able to purchase things is, uh, you know, bad or if you can purchase them, that's fine. But you really your creativity is challenged when you don't have um, access to just go and buy things. You actually get to create something. And it's put to a challenge. I have a spot up try to bring this up real close to you guys to see bring the light in can you see it it's a little bit there we go make the lighting all right so here we go we've got all our little white lines all our little all our little blue dots, turquoise dots, and all that kind of fun stuff happening. I'm just going to clean up the top up here. Clean that up and um, I think we're done. So I'll hope that you guys learned some things. So one is don't give up even if you think it's harder than you first thought it was going to be because almost everything's going to be a little bit harder someplace sometime in the project that is going to be harder than you expect um, uh, for different reasons and everything like that and so um don't give up i mean look at the sistine chapel not that we're doing sistine chapel but look at how hard it could be and we're not doing that we're just doing a place um and almost everybody goes through that where they are kind of like, what am I doing? Why did I do this? All that kind of stuff. But it will be very rewarding in the end when you get it finished and you're able to enjoy it, the vision and come to life. And then um, uh, two or three other things is, um, you know, lay down if you need to, use gravity, bring it to a different position so that you can get the right angles and get um, moving. But you're gonna also have to be uncomfortable at times to get the right angles and get different things and it's just you know work through it take a coffee break but don't let the product go dry at all and then um I highly recommend also something I didn't do again because I get super excited about pieces and I'm just like I'm gonna do this is um definitely prime before you do it as well um especially where it's not real wood because the primer will just help it adhere a little bit better because I did have a couple times where um, the paint pulled up and so I'm going to seal it. I'm going to use where is it? Um, I'm going to use 
this to seal it and just make sure it stays intact and everything like that. And I'll show it to you once I get that all taken care of. So bye creative ones. I hope that you like this, subscribe, see other things, see my other paintings on campuses and, um, and just enjoy being creative. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Say bye Zahava. Bye Zahava. Oh, there she goes. She's like, bye. I want you to feed me. I want my second breakfast. Yeah, my cats are kind of like hobbits. They like to eat a lot. So, and I was to Bye.